Hi folks, thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm going to tie a little variation on the balloon caddis. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, in the vise is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. It's at size 12. It's a fine wire hook and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Sempify black. This is a 18 -0. it's the nano silk. So as always with the nano silks, first thing I'm going to do is add a very very small little drop of super glue onto the shank of the hook. I'm going to use my thread to spread that up the shank and then I'm going to catch on using my rat's tail to help guide my thread to the back of the hook. Now I'm going to come just to where a barb may appear on a normal hook. Remove my waist. Okay, the glow bright number 12 is going to be a little bit of the tail for me. I don't need much. It's a very subtle tail, as you can see from the original fly. Uh, it's only very, very short at the back there, so I only need... Fold it in half once, fold it in half twice, and I'm going to bring my thread quickly up to the front and catch her that in. Pulling it tight so that it comes off directly over the top of the shank of the hook. Then I can come in with my snips and I want it to, to be in line with the bend of the hook which I've just caught then I can give it a little rough out with my fingers and forget all about it. Next I'm going to tie in a rib I'm using a medium copper wire here sorry the label's gone but it is a medium not small uh, because I want the copper rib to really show through with the dressing so I'm going to capture that in on my side and I'm running it all the way up the side of the body just so I can keep a nice level body when I, I come to double on my body material so there it is I'll just put it behind my vice out the way and what I'm using for the body this time is uh, Andrew's scruffy dubbing and this one is the scruffy buzzer I've already taken a little bit out of the packet, as you can see it's a kind of ginger, it's got some red and blues and yellows in there, really interesting uh, colours to it. But you don't have to use this, you can, you know, there's other other things, whatever dubbing you have really, um, you know, your imagination, just let it run wild and, and you can come up with some nice stuff just with, just, just with what you have in your fly tying collection. I think people get a little bit too preoccupied with it's got to be this, it's got to be that. Um, I'm not a big advocate of that because generally I haven't got half the stuff people are saying you definitely need. <laughs> so uh, I make do with what I have in my tying collection. So I've run my body up and I've left about an eighth of an inch uh, behind the eye of the hook. I'm now going to grab my rib and I'm going to bring it in the opposite direction to the way my body went down. This makes it stand out a little bit from the dubbing. Um, and it also secures that dubbing in even more. Not that I think it would go far. So keeping tension on your thread, just come around and remove your excess rib. Now, next, what we're going to do is, to help with the buoyancy, I'm going to use some of this. Now, it's like aero wing, only this is the fish-on equivalent. So, this is ultra-dry yarn, and the first thing I'm going to do is open up the ends here, and it can be quite, it's quite a thick, thick yarn. You can see if I hold it against a fly, it's far more than I need. So what I'm going to do with my uh, my 
comb, I'm going to just comb out the ends of the material and I want about half. So I'll take half like so and then just snip that away. So now the material's combed out, it should be quite much easier to work with as well. So you'll notice I've got quite a lot of raggedy ends here. I don't want that, so I'm going to just trim them. Then I'm going to come back a good distance actually, so just over an eighth of an inch, and capture in the ultra dry yarn. Once you're content that's in place, again come in with your snips and it doesn't want to be any longer than your tail. So you can see there's my, there's my little tail sticking out, there's the yarn. Okay next I'm going to tie in the balloon part of this caddis. Now I've used some of this stuff, this is from uh, Uphaven fly fishing. It's a it's a thin foam, as you can see there. Uh, I used to use the stuff from craft shops, but it was pretty pants. It was much thinner, and it didn't uh, have the same float floatability as as this stuff does. So I've started to use this of late, and I've already got a piece that I've cut off. So how I cut this was simply I got a ruler and a scalpel put it on a cuttable surface below and cut myself off roughly um, four millimeters in width and you can see I've cut it at an angle there and I'm just going to add that on. Now with foam you've got to be really careful when you're tying with the nano silks because they're really strong and they'll just cut straight through your foam and you'll be left with nothing. <laughs> you'll be left crying yourself to sleep on your giant pillar. But I think I've managed to do it there without uh, causing too much devastation. So, balloon caris. Uh, you, would, you would think this fly would use elk hair, but I like to use deer hair. I find it easier to work with and it, it just looks a lot nicer, I think, than, than the elk hair version. Some people will tell you different, and uh, that's great for them, but from a fishing perspective, I really like this. The deer hair, I think, recovers much better than elk hair after being taken by a fish. So, the next thing I want to do is add my deer hair. Now, I've already filled my stacker, and I've banged it on the table prior to shooting the video, because I didn't want to disturb um, the camera. So if I just open that out now, I should have a nice stack of deer hair to grab at the tips there. So I'll just come in, pick up the deer hair from the stacker. I'm going to change over hands and I just want to dress it up to the hook. And I want that slightly longer than the tail. Not much, just ever so slightly. So I'll transfer hands again. And just off camera, I'm going to snip away my waist. And then I can come in. Get a lock and turn in if you can. A couple of turns. And then what you want to do is come through them cut ends. Just securing everything in. Once you're happy you've done that, you can let go and you can have a look at your fly. I'm fairly pleased with that, that's looking the business. And then for the end, there's a number of things you can do with this. Uh, if I chose a different thread to tie with today, I could have split the thread and made a little dubbing loop. But on this occasion, all I'm going to do is take some more of the same dubbing I used on the body and dub that on to cover up 
my cut ends. You don't need very much. Just hold it out of the way, bring it to the front, and then all the way to where you finish tying down your wing. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so next, take your your balloon part, pull it back ever so gently, and where your caddis wing starts and your dubbing head is, that's where you catch in. Again, take great care when you're doing this, gentle turns. I've done three there. And what I'm going to do to finish this fly is just add a little bit of super glue to my thread. Add another few turns and this will hold this all into place nicely. And then I'm going to put a half hitch in. If you're a fly tying genius, you'll be on that whip finish tool like a fat kid on chips. So once you've secured it, you can remove your waste. And what I'm going to do is I cut at an angle here. Try not to cut any of your deer hair and it leaves it flat. Now I'm going to show you a little what the reason I do it like this. So if I turn it this way you'll see I've left a flat platform there and uh, while I've got the vise loose I'll just show you the uh, the footprint of the fly which uh, is really attractive to trout but going back to my original point uh, I've left a platform there and sometimes uh, I use the pointy spinner technique which is I get some UV dust which is freely available from eBay and I mix it with UV resin I just put a dot on there so if I'm fishing a fall um, and it, the light's starting to go you can activate the UV with a UV pen torch while you're on the river and then it will light up lovely for you and while you're fishing away when the lights go out you just lift in and very often you will have a nice plump brown trout on the end there we go thanks very much for watching if you haven't subscribed to the channel please think about doing so there's new videos every week and i hope to see you next time